so I've been burned out on uh, politics this year, and I don't mean burned out as in Bernie Sanders. I mean, um, I'm actually tired after two election cycles of being a delegate that went to the state convention and every other convention. Um, I decided not to do it this year because I'm working on my education and some uh, employment opportunities. So I'm just not going to do it this year. And this year, I would say, is more exciting than the two years that I went as delegate um, and got involved in politics and, and did a voter registration drive and all that. Um, this is far more exciting. Um, and I'd like to talk about how this uh, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton thing is going to play out. Um, today is the last day of March 2016, and I'm just going to predict right now that it's not going to be over until the very last state. And here's how I'm coming to that realization. Um, Hillary Clinton needs, with her super delegates backing her, um, she needs 641 delegates right now. Bernie Sanders needs twice as many. He needs 1,332. Right? Well, nothing is going to be decided if things are going the way that they have been going for Bernie Sanders, which has been very positive for him. But uh, in April, nothing's going to be decided uh, as far as who's going to be the Democratic uh, presidential nominee because 731 delegates are going to go in April, right? Um, if Bernie Sanders takes two-thirds to 80% of them in April, just like he did uh, on the last little mini Super Tuesday in, in March, um, he's still not going to have enough. Then May comes around, and in May, there's only 235 delegates up. So there's two months that we're going to have still no fucking answer to this. Who's going to win, Hillary or Bernie? Um, and that's if, if the trends keep going and, and Bernie has his way. Um, there are enough delegates there for Clinton to clinch if she were to win all those states. It just doesn't look as likely because the momentum is on Bernie's side. So then we come to June, and specifically on June 7th when California comes into play. But um, that is, down to the wire, the last minute right there. That's it. Um, on that day, you know, we'll, we'll have an answer, maybe, um, then the Democratic National Convention will happen. But still, all of that time, we could have had a, a solid front runner for the Democratic Party, and we will end up with uh, a very big split. And it looks very much like the superdelegates will be making the decision between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. And uh, I had previously made a video response to the Amazing Atheist, and, and he responded on the Drunken Peasants podcast to my video. Um, but he made another video where he was pleading that people keep it up because those superdelegates will realize that they're going against the popular opinions. Uh, they're going against the, their own base if they stick to Hillary. And to me, it seems like uh, Bernie Sanders' only chance is to woo some of those superdelegates over uh, in a sort of brokered convention. Um, thing is, uh, a precedent was set um, at the Democratic National Conventions with Bill Clinton and with Barack Obama, and that is that when one person wins a majority in order to nominate them, the the delegates from the other person who had a lot of people, um, they are not invited to the convention. Um, you can look at uh, Bill Bradley, 
um, in 2000. Didn't get all of his delegates didn't get invited. Um, LaRouche for uh, Bill Clinton. All of the the delegates from that were for him didn't get invited. Um, and then all of the minor opposition for you know Barack Obama's reelection in 2012. Those delegates that those those minor um, candidates had had won, they were not invited to attend. So uh, the the whole brokering thing looks like it's not even on the table because that's how things go in the Democratic Party. Um, not my experience in the uh, Republican Party, which I was a delegate for, as a spoiler in El Paso County. In Colorado, um, in in that party, there was an actually uh, a huge fear that the uh, Paul bots would come together with uh, a, enough delegates from each state, even though those state, states went to um, they they went to the the majority winner, you know, winner winner take all style. But if they could stall the uh, nomination long enough, they could get to that third vote where they would all be freed from who they had pledged themselves to, and they could possibly come out with Ron Paul instead of Mitt Romney. Uh, That was in uh, the last presidential election. And there was a really big fear, such that during the Republican National Convention, they changed the rules so that... Uh, Ron Paul could not do what he was trying to do. Um, and if the the rules of the Republican National Convention were the, the same as they are now, after Ron Paul, back when Ronald Reagan got the nomination in 1979-80, Ronald Reagan never would have been president because the Republican Party couldn't have been taken over in the same way. And so now you have an even weirder takeover of the Republican Party by Donald Trump, a complete outsider, um, hadn't paid his dues at all, in fact had um, worked with a lot of Democrats before that. Um, and yeah, it's it's amazing to me that there's uh, such an upswing of, of support for um Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump, both of whom are outsiders to the parties that they're they're running for, um, and it speaks a lot about uh, how post the Occupy movement politics have changed. Um, people don't respect uh, establishment politics, and, and um, that's the the framework that they're seeing things through. And I think. Um, had the Occupy movement and Ron Paul never happened, that uh, Bernie Sanders wouldn't have the type of support that he has right now. But, uh, yeah, in April, 731 delegates up. If Bernie Sanders gets every damn one of them, we won't have an answer. In May, 235 delegates up. If Bernie Sanders gets every damn one of them, we still won't have an answer. We're going all the way down to the wire in June. In June, before we have an answer as to who the Democratic Party is going to put up as their candidate. Um, If Bernie Sanders were to finally pull it out, that would be the biggest uh, bait and switch as far as who who they're showing as their frontrunner that the Democratic Party has done since 2004 when... Howard Dean was the front runner and got all of the all of the attacks from the Republican Party squarely on Howard Dean. That's what happened. And um, as those attacks uh, weighed on his campaign, um, and all of the Republicans just decided that that he was going to be the front runner and, and they researched him and only him, um, John Kerry was pretty much a dark horse who just came from behind and, and took it all, you know. Um, and John Kerry didn't do very well uh, in the the presidential election, um, with that being 
the way that he got the nomination. And so I'm hoping that um, whatever happens, be it Clinton or Sanders, that this long process of, of deciding who's going to be the Democratic nominee um, does not ruin their chances in the long run because, you know, it's going to be June before we have all the votes in and Sanders is not backing down, nor is Clinton. Um, July, there's the convention. And then there's only so many months to tear apart Donald Trump, you know. And I really would have wished for uh, a more solidified, more um, cohesive base for the Democrats this year. I really would have, because... I don't want to see Donald Trump. I seriously don't want to see Ted Cruz as president. You know, I'm uh, anybody but the Cowboys pragmatist here saying, uh, let's not have either of those idiots. And I I really want for the, the attacks back and forth between Sanders and Clinton to stop. But I don't see it because both of them really um, are not backing down. So we're going to have to wait. And we're not going to have any answers this spring. It'll be summertime at that convention when we finally learn who the who the nominee will be. 